Welcome back. This is Dave Rosenblum from the Painting Exam Podcast and Board Review. I wanted to uh, notify you all about a few things that have been going on. In light of the COVID epidemic, I have been putting out a lot of content on the website podcast in the pain news section on the new Painting Exam website. And driving to work this morning, I was listening to Doctor Talk, in which they were mentioning all the residents that are having interruptions to their programs as well as the fellows and med students graduating early. And I thought to myself, what could I do to contribute since I am sitting on a ton of content and I imagine a lot of fellowship programs are being interrupted by what's going on. So I decided to release the premium episodes of the Pain Exam podcast or my lecture series for the fellowship programs and create a section on my website entitled the Pain Exam Virtual Fellowship. You can find it by going to painexam.com slash virtual fellowship or pain virtual or virtualpainfellowship.com and we'll do our best to make up for what you may be lacking in your training and assist your program directors. It's not meant to replace anybody's fellowship, of course, but whatever little we could do in terms of lectures that you could listen to on the way to work or um, any video tutorials, I am going to put on the site as well as ask anyone out there, and I'm sure there's a lot of you who have your own videos, to submit them and I will post them for you and you could keep your name, your watermark, whatever, so you get credit. But the idea is to create a place where the doctors can come to get any sort of knowledge gaps that have been created by the COVID crisis taken care of. So I hope this is something that can help you all. And for now, the, the, the content that I'm releasing is temporary during this crisis. I worked very hard on this for many years and I compiled a large database of lectures and videos. So I hope you all can benefit from it. And I wish that you all stay safe and God bless. And now I wanted to review ACIP's guidelines, which are taken mainly from the CDC. You shouldn't be touching or kissing other people, especially your patients. <laughs> um, mucous membranes, nose, mouth, don't touch. Wash your hands regularly. I would do it for 20 seconds with soap and water, regularly clean surfaces. The four principles of hand awareness are wash your hands when they're dirty before eating, obviously. Don't cough into hands. Do not sneeze into hands. Above all, they mentioned, do not put your fingers in your eyes, nose, or mouth. Do not use your phone close to your mouth, and each time you use it, wipe it. That's going to be difficult. They want you to wipe it with an antiseptic solution. Please use hands-free systems, including Bluetooth, and I think it's more relevant also if you're sharing phones with other people. Precautions for patients. Ask the following on the telephone and also post this on your front door. Have you ever experienced a fever, chills, and shortness of breath in the last two to four weeks? Have you been in close contact with a person with a confirmed case of the coronavirus? Have you traveled from a foreign country or to a foreign country that has experienced an outbreak of the coronavirus within the last two to four weeks. Patients passing through these measures must be provided with a mask or protective item to wear and quarantined or isolated in a separate room close to the reception. They should be observed immediately and discharged for self-quarantine and report to authorities. Now this is uh, the March 21st, I believe, ACIP release on the guidelines. Check temperatures on all patients for high risk patients and elderly patients, 99.4, and others over 100 document the fever. Uh, keep them away from any other patients, of course. And if you, you should post that if they answer yes to any of the following questions that they do not enter the office. The sign should be paste, paste, uh, posted outside the office just so that no one will come in and cont contaminate the patients. The procedures for the AMSurge centers and office have been limited to, they're limiting elective procedures and office procedures and ASC procedures that are performed, they need to be done after careful screening. And you need to weigh the risk benefits and take appropriate precautions to, and have enough supplies to last for at least 60 days if there's, in case there's a lockdown. 
and these apply after reopening. A large number of practices are not performing procedures at this time. We've limited to very few procedures. Some of the risk factors you may want to observe are for patients in nursing homes, those with multiple medical comorbidities, the elderly, uh, comorbidities such as diabetes, cancer, respiratory conditions, high dose opioids or patients with substance abuse disorders, smokers, COPD, uncontrolled sleep apnea, all may pose additional risk for serious complications of COVID-19. Giving steroids, especially to the elderly, may not be prudent, and they mentioned that immunosuppression, of course, and other issues, and that the literature states that there's really no difference in outcomes when patients are given local anesthetic alone versus lidocaine or local anesthetics with steroids. And ASAP mentions there's extensive literature on this. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the CDC has recommended a national shutdown of 14 days. Well, this has actually been extended since the time that he mentioned that. This is a little old. And as of now, the treatments, um, there are two drugs used, which by the time you're hearing this, we may or may not know more about those two drugs. And if you're not sure what drugs they are, it's the azithromycin and the hydroxychloroquine, which are being used as treatment and prophylaxis. Um, they're looking for expanded umbilical cord and cell infusions to be used, and doctor, um, the doctors at ASIP are working on this, and I believe they already got it approved by now. Contraindications uh, to chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine um, should be evaluated, and if not, you may consider giving them to the patients, and the dosing is on the ASIP's website. I'll refer you there. I'm not here to give you medical advice, just make you aware of certain policies and guidelines posted. So I hope this helps you all. Once again, this is a very special time in the history of the world. A lot of awful things are happening, but I think a lot of great things will be happening as well after this is over. And it will be a tough time. We may struggle, but I think that in the end, we may come out stronger. We are getting that kick in the butt to go to the, the online platforms, which for better and for worse, it will never replace hands-on training and learning nor is that the intention. I hope you take advantage of the online resources that I'm posting, especially the ones I'm going to post for free for fellows. And I hope the program directors reach out to me. I have no intention of replacing their teaching or anything like that. Just want to supplement and fill in the gaps. If you happen to be sitting on content that you wish to post, send it over. You'll get full credit and hopefully you'll build your name and get some recognition as well. I would love to share it with my audience, and I hope we can help each other through these tough times. Good luck, and God bless. Dr. Rosenblum is here solely to educate, and you are solely responsible for all your decisions and actions in response to any information contained herein. These podcasts are not intended as a substitute for the medical advice of a physician to a particular patient or specific ailment. You should regularly consult a physician in matters relating to yours or another's health. You understand that this podcast is not intended as a substitute for consultation with a licensed medical professional. Copyright 2017, David Rosenblum, all rights reserved. No part of this publication may be reproduced produced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic, mechanical, recording, or otherwise, without the prior written permission of the author.